Oh, I'm just doing a drum solo, guys. <laughs> Getting ready for Wednesday live Collider TV talk. I'm Josh McCuga here. Again, you guys are like, wait, I thought TV talk was just Monday. If you are, or if you haven't been to the channel in a second, no, we are live every day now, 11 a.m. PST. I am joined today uh, by our, our moderator, our host, our the loveliest ginger in the entire world, Mrs. Grace Hancock. Oh, that was such a great intro. Hey, well, guys, Mrs. good Grace morning. Face. Also, yeah. guys, I'm going to say this at the top of the show today. Please send me your Twitter questions at Mrs. Grace Face. Grace Face. Great. <laughs> at Mrs. Grace Face Collider TV Talk. Hashtag. <laughs> Great. You're crushing <laughs> good, it. Good, good. Really good. That was and really we good turn place. over to, to our, uh, our Wednesday regular here, uh, a new segment we're going to be debuting today <laughs> with the pink haired Emma Fox. Yeah, yo. I was thinking, when you were doing your drum solo, do we ha I feel like we need a sick theme song. You know what I mean? Like, Ooh. I feel like Collider TV Talk needs a theme song. I agree. All right. Yeah. Get on it. Yep. Okay, listen. Yep. You said it, fans, send in your Twitter questions. Yep. Fans, send in some original songs uh, via. Oh, my I just compose one real fast. You know, mock it up in GarageBand, send it our way. Yeah. As long as it has like a powerful guitar riff, a <laughs> drum solo that I can rear into, and that we can play in studio getting ready for live TV talk. What do you guys think? Oh, and just like blast it on loop. Yeah. yeah. Probably more than like 15 yeah, seconds. Yeah, just get everybody guys pumped up. That. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I like it. Well, there's only one way to get pumped up, and that's with our own friggin' theme song. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's get into it, Grace. What's up first? Yeah, so we're going to hop right into news. So this year, the CW crossover is only going to be two nights down from last year, where we had four, which was a smashing success for the CW. So I think we're all kind of bummed about this. We're all a little like, why? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, okay, last year, after the four, like, it was more of like a 2.75 crossover. Yeah, I was going to say, was it really four nights? Well, because <laughs> Supergirl had, like, it was a regular episode, and then all of a sudden, Flash showed up. Show, yeah, exactly, sure, yeah, exactly. Then she went there, then there was a training episode, and there was a battle episode, yeah. and then Legends, it sort of just, like, petered out a little yeah, bit, Yeah, right? yeah. It was a lot. It, it was a lot, but it was really successful, and it was a fun week of television. No, absolutely. It, it, was, it was a blast. Well, and I mean, you know, these all of these shows are supposed to be sharing the same universe, so it makes sense for them to have crossovers, and I mm -hmm. think that the mm -hmm. CW does a good job of using those crossover episodes sparingly mm -hmm. in, in such a way that it doesn't just feel like, oh, remember that, like, Flash and Arrow are in the same world, right. you know? Right. And because Supergirl's not in the same world, what they're doing here is they're doing Supergirl and Arrow, together on Monday, mm -hmm. and they're doing Flash and Legends together on Tuesday, which they already share a night anyway. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing that the only reason they would do this is because of timing and schedule, and because there's all these shows now, and we were hoping, because this is coming out November 27th, which right. is the Monday after Thanksgiving. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we were all hoping, I think, that, uh, that we would see... Black, Black Lightning. Lightning, yeah. Somewhere I, in here. It's interesting, because I, I, I was thinking about that when I was reading the news about this this morning, and I was like, I think at that point, Black Lightning, because because the shows come back in October. Uh, no, to, like mid, late mid September. September. Late yeah, September. Yeah, yeah. So at that point, it's like Black Lightning will have been on for a couple of months. Well, no, because he's getting mid-season. Okay. Black Lightning is getting mid, like later in the season. Right. But still. But, it's, but I still think that it would have been on long enough that like we would kind of want to see how this connects to right. everything else that's going on sure. with the DC CW shows. So And also too, if somebody even brings up to me that the Flash musical episode was a fucking crossover, I will lose my <laughs> Sorry I swore. Sorry I swore there. I'm really I really apologize, but I will lose I my your mind. Apology. Uh David Griffin and I sat in ballroom 20 and more than two or three people brought up the musical episode and I wanted to stand up, <laughs> stop Sit bringing down. up the musical episode. <laughs> Cuz it was the worst. So we're only it getting two we're only getting two episodes right so yeah. even in the, even in the springtime if they're like hey we're gonna do another crossover event and guess what guys it's a silent film da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, i'm gonna lose my mind because i think black <laughs> lightning would be awesome film. in this and i think black lightning is gonna be kind of a breakout star as disappointed as we were with what happened with black lightning at comic-con via we didn't get anything right i right. still think it's gonna be badass two nights <laughs> of this, Supergirl and Arrow doing their thing, and I'm guessing they're gonna like fall into Flash Legends, but yeah. still, I think we were promised a bill of goods 
Yeah, like, the, I ordered a I ordered a tent for right, camping, right? And I got a sleeping <laughs> right. Bag. You you got a sleeping bag <laughs> and like a beach umbrella. Yes, a beach. Yes, correct. It's a little cold right. out there for a beach umbrella. Well, you yes. know, we'll have to we'll have to check in on November twenty seventh when we're all ten pounds heavier and and see how this turns out. Um, Trip to fame, Grace. Trip I want to wanna move on. I want to move on to uh, Black America on Amazon. It's going to be kind of Amazon's answer to HBO's Confederate. Um, this has caused a lot of controversy. A lot of people are upset, um, and this is kind of the, they're going to take this in another direction where there's kind of this new nation where freed slaves come up with new colonia. What are yes. you guys, how are you feeling about this? This is really, really interesting stuff. It is, because, because, and rightfully so, Confederate has caused quite a stir yeah. uh, amongst the internet. Now, the thing that's interesting, I think, about black America is, Yes, it seems like this is reactionary to Confederate, but this has been in yeah, development for way for longer a long than Confederate has been time. Around. Right. Yeah. And there are a lot of very successful people behind this show. Yes. Yeah. I mean uh, both shows. What yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Um here's here's my thing and and maybe it's 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 crazy for just three white people to be up here talking about this. I but know. Uh, <laughs> as but, crazy as two white guys yeah, making a show about just, it, just yeah, um, yeah, there is that too. I, I always bring up this this situation: is Man in High Castle um, is an, is an unbelievably well done show. I think it's fantastic, but it it puts this weird seed in your brain of like, well, I mean, it's not that bad, but it's terrible, <laughs> right? I think, and I said that about Confederate when Confederate came out. I love. This I don't like the name New Colonia. I would like them to have a more cool name, but um, I like I love the fact that this Black American Amazon is going to kind of be the anti Confederate because it it's going to bring up the conversation that mm -hmm. all of us want to have is what if this happened and what if this happened? Yeah. Let's see yeah. how how hypothetically it's going to spark a lot run. of really probably very relevant and, and interesting conversation mm -hmm. that maybe needs to be had. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, this is an interesting time for both of these shows. To oh, come yeah. Out. No, I, I definitely agree with that. And I mean, that that's the thing about any sort of sci fi ish alternate history like that. It, it is specifically to bring up these kind of issues and address them. And I think that that is absolutely what black America is doing, whereas I feel that people feel with Confederate and I, I don't disagree with them on this. I understand people's feelings about it, that they feel like that is simply a show that is white people exploiting black people's suffering so that like they can feel bad and right. like better about themselves being like, no, we care about these people. Whereas like black America, that this is truly bringing yeah. up the issues that need to be discussed. Yeah, it's two really different perspectives. And I mean, I know that the creators of Game of Thrones have not had a, a hugely diverse uh, gathering in Game of Thrones, so it's right. just it's kind of interesting on all on all ends. Yeah, yeah I, I, this is. I again, I don't have any like horse in a race here, <laughs> but I there there the problem is that there aren't a lot of people there a lot of people out there aren't as intelligent as a lot of level minded people are, and they may see Black America on Amazon and they'll be like, we're gonna we're taking it back, and then other people in Confederates like, yo, we should have won. Yeah. We should have. We should have won it. That's, That's why I keep the Confederate flag in my truck. Yeah. Like there are two sides yep. of this, and people being inspired. It's like when you have a horror film and you show a, a, a serial killer, yeah. and then all of a sudden there is a strangler somewhere. Right? There yeah. are not so level-headed people that right. should watch it's, shows like this. It's like it's like with Handmaid's Tale. People who yeah, are like was, fundamentalist Christian being like, well, yeah, it should be like that. Like women yeah. should just be breeding stock. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? right. like, great. Yes. Uh, it's it, the, again, there are there are a lot of people out there. Yeah. Like, yep. I mean, I think I'm, I'm going to be watching. I mean, I'm going to watch both. I'm, yeah, I'm going to be tuning yeah. into both of these. I'm going to reserve any judgment on Confederate or Black America yeah. until we've seen until them. We've but seen it is it. a very um, it's going to be interesting. I'm excited for both of them. Like if it's 40 Larry the Cable guys on Confederate, <laughs> I'll be pretty pissed. <laughs> anyway. So we actually have to move on to something um, pretty serious. We're going to get a little heavy handed here. Uh, Aaron Hayes character on Kevin Can Wait <laughs> is going to be killed off. This oh, season, say it's I not know, so. I know, you guys. It's my we favorite have, show. We have to bring all news. We can't be biased. I know we're all devastated. I mean, if this doesn't say I want to watch TV, I don't know what does. I mean, look at that. <laughs> oh my God. There, there's there is fat, like hideous. Even they're bored. Yeah, even they're bored. Even they're like, uh. All right, here's the reason. I 
this I think this is a is a fun story. Is one, hey CBS, if you wanted Leah Remini in the show, you should have just called it King of Queens Two. Kevin's back, and he's been waiting. <laughs> right. Okay, instead of Kevin can wait. Right. It's the same sure. set. It's the exact same set in the exact same kitchen with another wife who's just younger than Leah Remini and less tan. And instead of their chemistry being like whatever, they're like, you know what? We're gonna kill her off, and then fast forward to when Kevin is still the same age and as equally obese, and just give him Leah Remini. <laughs> back i'm sorry <laughs> kevin james yeah it's like but it's, this, uh, and listen i know stories about kevin james i don't like the man okay yeah Never, oh. I've, i loved king of queens until i heard personal stories about the guy and i'm like you know what i don't like it anymore <laughs> yeah. and this when they brought this show up last year we were talking about the upfronts this was the most ridiculous trailer i was like <laughs> they just made king of queens again yeah and now they're like just fully accepting it like yeah we made king of queens again yes. like great well, and well, I, we'll just kill off a like, actor's and career they just, no like, problem fired her. yeah it's really and i mean sad. And, then, and then i was gonna say number one they just fired her which is really really sad and on top of that yeah. it's like it's a. Why are they killing her off in a sitcom? I, like, like you know what I mean? It's so bad. They're what? like, you're fired, and also you're dying. Right, exactly. It's like we're we're, we're gonna fast fire you. Over the whole thing. We're gonna fire you in such a way that we can be absolutely positive that you can never come back because right. this isn't a soap opera. Yeah. And people oh, don't come back yeah, from yeah, the yeah, dead. Yeah. No. It would have like, been amazing though if she got like a really. Um, great divorce settlement right and this is like an ongoing Ooh. story yeah and, or like she got a real satisfying divorce and yeah they like, could have taken it in so a way that's much like better funny. it's like a sitcom and they're like but you go die yeah. it's like whoa okay yes. so and uh, i again this is this is classic cbs because what cbs did uh two and a half men they were like oh guess what charlie <laughs> charlie sheen snort and blow off porn stars titties we better bring in ashen kutcher <laughs> Who's never done that before? And uh, let's Certainly bring in a show not. and then watch this slowly go down that water slide of broken dreams yeah, and watch right. the kid become more and more less Ooh, awkward. More right, awkward. right, right, right. Oh my god! Not, old, not to make fun of child actors, but that kid was brutal. It's a hard. It's hard. Yeah. It's so sad when boys come in when they're I, right on the. It's like Bran and yes. Game, of, Game Thrones. of Thrones. You're like that poor little man. Yeah. You're gonna be just fine. Um, but anyway, I know that that's a. Uh, we could talk about this all day, but I'm gonna. <laughs> right, I'm gonna cut us off. Everyone's um, favorite show. Okay. So so I, I'm I know still waiting on Kevin. I know we're all really excited to talk about this because I know we have some um, conflicting opinions. Uh, okay, so Unabomber, Discovery's new scripted series premiered last night with yeah. its two-hour premiere. Manhunt Unabomber. Yes. Manhunt Unabomber. Which, which I'm colon. guessing, colon. Unabomber. Uh, correct. Mm. Um, I'm guessing the reason that they're calling it is that this will probably turn into well, a if they're, anthology. If it's, yeah. if it's successful, yeah, they're going to turn it yeah. into an anthology thing and, and touch on some other probably real-life uh, crime stuff, which is yeah. my jam. I didn't adore this show. It's so Emma. funny because I really liked it. And it was and I was really thinking about this because we were talking about the pilot of Ozark the other week. Yes. And I was like, I don't know, I'm not really that into crime stuff. Unless it's like true crime yeah, story. Well, yeah, you, I, loved, I, uh, you loved OJ. Yeah, I, I did. I loved oh, OJ. I, I loved, loved that thing. I love true crime stuff and I love Not OJ the person. No, no, no. The, the no, show. no, the show. I do not <laughs> so Oh, clear. I meant the person. No, I most certainly did not. Nobody Cody has ever walked meant out that of the in their studio life. Like, like, we're done. Um yeah, so for me it's like I, I feel like what I'm enjoying about this series is I like kind of detective sort of series that are not like Sherlock Holmes. You know yes. what I mean? That are instead of being like a whodunit that are more like a psychological thriller, you as the audience, you know what's going on because this is a thing that really happened. So yeah. we know how this story is going to end more or less. So for me, it's so interesting to watch all of these people dance around each other and uncover all of the the various clues and elements that lead them to getting a conclusion and sam worthington i'm i'm like who knew yeah i'm especially like for me i i loved that scene in the beginning where and i guess spoilers um it, where he decodes that <laughs> they, they get the unabomber eventually yeah exactly who when he looks at that letter that's from the unabomber that he sent and he looks at it and he immediately goes oh it's this paragraph thing and it's yes. like the first letter of each paragraph yeah. spells out a, spells out a sentence so because i i don't know i i like stories about like really smart weirdos it's, and that's yeah, clearly yeah, like yeah. what I'm this totally is. on board yeah this may sound very like pretentious of me but i've always been that, like that person that wants to leave a room be like i wonder if they're talking about how good i was at parcheesi or like something like that <laughs> we're yeah. like they're walking around, this is the when greatest you leave crime the studio story. today like, we're gonna be wow. talking mad good shit about yeah, it yeah. Yeah. exactly because i i, I want to be that guy in the scene it's like it's like jason bateman and ozark and they were saying he's a genius or walter white mm -hmm. making the meth is like he's the best this yeah. dude is they brought this guy in he's a little socially awkward just sort i mean obviously not as bad as ted skazinski right but he's a little socially awkward somehow got the girl from uh 
Grey's Anatomy who had the yes. face reconstruction in season three. Yes. And uh, as a wife Edward and, Cullen has, Cullen. and yeah. somehow has three kids. Uh, I would like to see, I, I, eventually we're going to see like the meltdown of his family, but I, he, you were talking about how the Unabomber was, you remember it very vividly. So vividly. I remember the Newsweek cover, but I remember thinking to myself, and we were talking about this before, and this is super <laughs> morbid, but go with me on this one. I was saying to myself, I mean, he hasn't really killed a bunch of people. It's just like, he blew off a few bombs. He blew up like 20 bombs and only killed like two people. Like, come on, man, get your bombs better. But why not? then I'm watching this, I'm like, man, they were really put in a ton of work trying to catch the Unabomber. Mm -hmm. Like a huge task force because I mean, it was this really guy was scary. really, yeah. yeah, this guy was putting bombs everywhere. And now I think about how many bombs he put out there, I'm like, that's pretty good. He's pretty scary. It well, is pretty scary. like a, a bomb scare at LAX, like that type of stuff yes. when there can be massive casualties and All they didn't thinking. have any trails for a while. All I kept thinking is, <laughs> If I'm at LAX and my flight gets canceled, I know, for the Obama, like, I'd be like, so oh, bad. You fucking <laughs> that airport is already the worst in the world. And, and then Mr. Big the is like, yeah, they're fine to go. Yeah. And then I'd be like, what? Oh, now we're safe? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, totally. When you live in LA, you totally get it. But I mean, you didn't, you didn't like this, Grace. I didn't hate it. Mm. I just didn't love it. It felt super formulaic for me. I did not. I just felt like I knew every single shot. I was like, that's exactly the shot I was expecting. That's exactly, like, and also the dialogue was a little clunkily, like, clunkily. See, there you go. Yep. It was good, like everything good. that surprised good thing me. you're not in the show, Which was Grace. very, I know, because apparently I can't speak today. Um, everything that surprised me in the show surprised me negatively. I was, like, surprised because mm. I was like, oh, that dialogue, like, hit me in the icky feels. Like, good. I was never like, oh. Ooh, like it just there didn't is grab a little me. something about the girl partner who says bra all the time. Yeah, oh my, it's like so. It's a little too like cliche, like yeah. eh, 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 buddy cop. But like, people I don't in know. Philadelphia do say the word wooder and like wooder ice. I mean, that like, makes me thing. very happy. That's a yeah. real thing. So if like people came to a show and they were like, oh, what's a Pittsburgh accent sound like? And I did it, and they were like, no, it doesn't sound like that. I'm like, yes, yeah. it's a real <laughs> it sound. does. And Philadelphia is the same. I, creepy I was way. actually thinking of you, Makuga, when <laughs> I saw the the Philadelphia Flyers <laughs> shirt, and I was like. <laughs> yeah, How's, totally, how's yeah, Makuga yeah. going to feel about this? He's oh, a Penguins guy. I know. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think it has a lot of potential. It's well made. Um, it's just... So here on the show, I usually like to say, unless the, the pilot has officially offended me, that right, I would right, give it right. three episodes. Yeah. Would you give this three episodes? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. I mean, so, I love... Paul Bettany is so, like, so engaging. He yeah. could be on yeah. Sesame Street, and I'd be like... He's, he is really good. And, and, and again, Sam Worthington may not be our country, or not he's not even American. No, nope, But he's, uh, not. He's, he's, not. he's not, like, Neither the best Paul. actor in Hollywood, but I really enjoyed him in this role. Yeah, yeah I mean, he, this is a very, like, quiet, subtle role, and I yeah. like that, so I'm excited. The guy um, who plays the bearded uh, other, like, the FBI asshole oh, cop. Yeah. yeah, the dude. He's in The Nick, and he is awesome he's in The Nick. Good. What other show is he in? Anybody? Other show. There was another show that we most Eli? recently watched. This... Mm, this is us. Yep, thank you. D From the back coming row, in hot. Griff. D, D Griff here for our Defenders <laughs> review later. Uh, um, he could have come on the show today. I didn't even think about it. Saying. I know. He's like right there. We're like, hi, buddy. Loser. He's so he's handsome. Like, he's like, I watched the Unabomber and I also have feelings about black America. I don't know why. Yeah, that's yeah. I, I'm sure. sure it sounds like that. All right. <laughs> well, and on that note, I'm going to move it right along. Um, I'm going to turn it over to our good friend, Emma, to talk some uh, anime. Yay. This is called Emmimation. Emmimation. <laughs> New segment. Thank you so much, Ray, for that graphic. We, we also need a theme song for MMA. Oh, MMA totally needs it's a theme song. Like quick and Japanese K pop yes. or K pop. Amazing. So please, guys, <laughs> send me your MMA theme songs M -M along with your Collider TV Talk theme songs. Let's talk about some anime. So, first of all, I had so many people tweeting at me this morning. Uh, it just, the Twitter news blew up with. Uh, the story that Netflix has licensed 12 new series uh, amongst them includes things like a remake of Saint Seiya and of uh, Devil Man. So there's all kinds of great stuff coming to Netflix. We will see Netflix is an interesting space for anime. We'll talk more about that in depth some other time because we're going to talk about this One Piece live action series that is happening. So uh, there's this company. And it's the same one that is uh, doing the... Uh, Cowboy Bebop live action series. Okay. Um, the, some of the producers that were involved in like Prison Break are part of this studio. It's called Tomorrow Studios. So yeah, they're adapting One Piece to And be. you were saying to me that there are a lot of people that are very, very passionate with keeping anime anime. It's, yeah, absolutely. It's like keeping Portland weird, weird or yeah, whatever Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I, think that, I think what it comes from weird. basically weird. <laughs> is the idea that stuff is animated for a reason. Um, so the other the other studio, as I say, Tomorrow Studios is also doing a Cowboy Bebop live action. Okay. And Cowboy Bebop is literally on every single list of 
what's a good starter anime if you've never watched anime? It's what's like something the gateway that's, drug? Yeah, what's a, what's a good thing to yeah. watch if you've never really been into you anime? Just don't go straight to heroin. You start with right, a exactly. Weed yeah, you yeah, start you start simple. Um, Sorry guys, so, kids don't do drugs. So don't do drugs. for me, when the news of Cowboy Bebop came out, I was kind of like. Meh, I think it'll work fine as a live action series. There's nothing about it. But you it. hated Death Note, which started as anime, correct? No, that is correct. Um, okay. But this is the thing. is So I, I've i never seen too many really good live action anime adaptations. Okay. So I think that's why people are kind of hesitant anytime news like this comes out. There's a lot of you know live action Japanese series of anime as well. Mm -hmm. and, and interestingly enough, my favorite version of Sailor Moon is is the live action J drama. Oh, okay. Now that being said, I would J stand for Japanese. Japanese drama, yeah. So so, so that like being J date Jewish. Jewish right. Drama, oh, yeah. Japanese drama. So, so I'm for learning me, a lot. I feel like that being said, I would prefer that live action drama as an animated thing. I just wish they'd done the same story but in an animated form because gotcha. you always run into the issue of cheesy looking effects. Now, this is an American production, so they're probably gonna have more of a budget than a Japanese show would, but like Monkey D. Luffy in One Piece, it, so One Piece is basically like a pirate anime. Everybody's huh. looking for One Piece, which is like the ultimate treasure. Yeah. And in I it, love this already. <laughs> and in it, uh, uh, like if you eat, de like if you're a devil fruit user, there's stuff called devil fruit and you get sort of special abilities from it. But so like Luffy is like stretchy, like, like Fantastic Four, like, like, Mr., like Mr. Fantastic and I'm just afraid that those effects are still going to look terrible, okay. you know? Mm -hmm. okay. So I don't know. I, I'm So on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you give the idea of One Piece live action? I, I, five. I feel okay. super neutral about it, quite okay. honestly. Super neutral. Yep. Uh, and then moving on to uh, talk about a couple of currently airing anime series. I'm going to continue to talk about My Hero Academia, which I was already mentioning during the weekly TV talk. Oh, yeah. I and remember. that series, I mean, there it is behind Josh Makuga's head. And it just continues to be... So good. We're in a really, really good story arc right now. Uh, they just in the last episode. Spoilers. That's Froppy. <laughs> she's a, her her quirk is that Froppy. she's got frog abilities. Because uh. basically, Grace in this world, everybody has superpowers. It's like normal to have should. superpowers, and Who's, it's not normal to not have superpowers. Ooh, I love that. <laughs> um, it's old old boobs anime. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, it's just shown in anime, so there's a, there's a little. <laughs> it, it dances. Guessing guys draw these ones. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Uh, but anyway, uh, in the last episode they caught stain the hero killer uh who was a so really bitch. great villain but we also got a lot of like todoroki's daddy issues coming out and uh ida sort of trying to get revenge for his brother and feeling like he's gotten people involved in this fight that they didn't need to be involved in and it was really really good and uh we're moving on to uh sort of new villain now who's released a bunch of these like crazy demon things with quirks upon the world so that will be interesting <laughs> to see what happens uh and then i asked twitter what other series they would like me to cover during this segment and uh many many people voted so thank you guys so much for all of your feedback uh so i'm going to be talking about the series gamers which is a new show it's based on a light novel it is so freaking cute basically it is about um a the the most popular girl in school karen is trying to like get together this gaming club at her school because apparently they used to have a very famous gaming club there um, and she's madly in love like with Quidditch. this. Like Yeah, well, no, no <laughs> more like hanging out and playing video. Love, yeah, well, no, no, no more like no. just hanging out and playing video games. Go, 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 uh, but go, go. she's like madly in love with Amano who's like this weird loner kid who just like likes to play like JRPGs. Would you have been in love with the loner kid in high school, Emma? No, I wouldn't okay. have. Yeah. I know. Karen's way better than I am. Yeah, she's, yeah she like <laughs> secretly. That was spelled Karen, but they say yeah, Karen. Karen yep. Yeah, Karen, yeah. They're just like too cool to say Karen. I get <laughs> yeah, it. So she's, I get it. But she secretly has like a really good heart. I don't know. I really like it. it it's definitely like taking a bunch of anime archetypes and fighting against them. So it's like Got you it. have like the the like cool guy in school that everybody wants to be and he's got like a really cute girlfriend but actually like he was a total nerd and like mm. he's really good at crane games and just Sounds wants like to David play video Griffin. games. Like David Griffin in <laughs> what? Uh, I mean Cody I mean, Hall. Well, I mean Adam Smith. Yeah. Son of a Oh, but yeah, oh, it's really cute, and I, and I really like this idea that uh, I actually kind of try to fight to promote in the real world, which is that to be a gamer doesn't mean that you necessarily have to be a competitive gamer or that you have to be particularly good at video games. You just have to really enjoy video games, and that's a message that's very prevalent in the series. I really like it. I'm three episodes in. I'm going to keep watching it. There you go. Gamers. Emma killing it. Emma Mation. Emma Mation. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. So we're going to real quick, I'm going to grab one of these Twitter questions. Tweet it up. Thank you, Chris at underscore Markel. He says, at Mrs. Grace Face, oh, with Black America, Monday, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, with Black America and Confederate coming, what alternate history would you like to see explored on TV? Hashtag Collider TV Talk. Man. Hmm. Uh, listen, I, I liked Taboo. So having the British win the Revolutionary yeah. War and seeing like if we'd be over here drinking tea and uh, hanging tea. out like modern day or like where it would be in like, let's say the early 1900s. Sure. That would be kind of badass. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I would totally Emma, dig that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. always been one that's been high up there for me since I saw that one episode of Sliders where they went into a yeah. <laughs> universe where that had happened. Okay. Um, I think for me, I would like to see, hmm, <laughs> I would like to see an alternate history where like, Women got the vote a lot earlier on, and like yeah, that goes along. You know what I mean? What mine is because I was I'm not making this political at all. <laughs> this is more like out of curiosity's sake. I would love to see a future where Hillary Clinton was president. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. I love to see where they take that. So uh, yeah, totally on the same page yeah. with that. All right, we're gonna wrap it up though, Josh. Do you it. have a pick of the day for us, my man? Yes. So we got a little <laughs> pick of the day. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome there. We're not doing Pick of the Week anymore since we're here every day, 11 a.m. PST. Uh, before we go into the Pick of the Day, though, uh, we are going to do the first four episodes of The Defenders. We're doing a full review. Myself, David Griffin, John Schnepp are all going to talk about the first four episodes. They are going to be spoiler, non-spoiler, kind of talking about it. They'll be each individual episode, so we're going to do all those. They'll be coming out this week, so look out for those. Uh, my Pick of the Day, if you were in high school, who would be your high school boyfriend from television? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and you oh, can man. pick an anime person if you want to. I know, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, would... I have mine. Okay, you it would Grace. totally be Jughead from Riverdale. Oh, oh Cole Sprouse. He yeah, just yeah, yeah. a fist fight for That's him. That's awesome. Okay, okay. Yep, Gosh, yep, I, yep. I, I don't know. I feel like there's. I have this perfect answer in my brain, and it's just like <laughs> not coming out. Um. Five. I mean, oh, for God. me, <laughs> unfortunately, it's not high school, but my like life true love is Ben Wyatt, of course, from Parks and Rec. And there you go. You can bring. Okay. In well, my life yeah. true love is called Drogo, so I changed my <laughs> answer. Okay. I changed my answer. Call Drogo in high school would be a hell of a football player. <laughs> he killed half the team with a blade yeah, and then ate dead. their hearts. They're like, Call, come on, <laughs> come on, like, damn it, Cole. I don't know what that was. All right, that was me being. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here before we do Emma Fife. Where can the good people find you on the internet? You can find me all over the internet wherever Emma Fife's are sold at my name, Emma Fife, E M M A F Y F F E. You're our one piece live action, <laughs> Emma Fife. How's that sound? Grace Later. Hancock. And uh, you guys can find me everywhere online at Mrs. Grace Face. There you go. Bing. Uh, I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga. Twitter and Instagram, The Josh McCuga Show on YouTube. And again, check out the Defenders reviews that we're doing. David Griffin, myself, and John Schnepp leading up to the premiere August 18th on Netflix. We'll see you guys tomorrow again live, 11 a.m. PST here on Collider Video. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.